Well, hello, hello. It is Sarah Jane, and I am so excited to be bringing you the, this uh, short course, five day We Too challenge um, to, really, to really bring you into um, your own life. So I'm just checking if everything is working. I have Zoom going as a backup in case this. We have a problem with Facebook Live, but if you are here, welcome, welcome. And um, we'll just give it a couple more minutes to wait for a couple of people to join. Hi, Farah, nice to see you here. Farah is the guardian of the Feed the Fur Balls, um, which you have all so beautifully and so generously given to. Um, hi, Aksana, nice to see you here. So while we're waiting for everybody to just jump in, I just want to say thank you for saying yes uh, to going back to the basic basics of, uh, woohoo, Susan, our five words that we're going to spell into the abundance codes that you were born with. And to just really uplift the poverty consciousness by being in this crazy thing called life together. And this is really why I wanted to, to create this container in within the next five days so that you can have the support in recognizing that we as a collective need to fully realize that we are the ones that we've been waiting for and I want you to really hear that you are the one that you have been waiting for and in that sort of universal heart of the eighth chakra each and every one of us can show up in service to do this great transformation that we're all here to do. Hi, Steve Barnes. Um, nice to see you here. Um, and if you are joining and you haven't uh, contributed your $8.88 towards the feeding of the fur balls, I really would um, encourage you to do that because generosity always comes from the heart and the universe is always going to meet you in that place. So, um, Please go ahead if you are part of the seven day believer challenges that I've always done for free before, um, but this time we are asking you to give a contribution of just $8 goes a long way in feeding, feeding the feral cat colony, which is where your money is going to go. So um, as I said, I'm so happy that you're here taking part in this, in this five days of really remembering the basics of manifestation with me. And um, just some housekeeping over the next couple of days that we're going to be together. We are going to meet here at eight, eight minutes past eight every single day, South African time. And all it takes is a willingness to have a beginner's mind, to engage actively within the group um, and share your insights and questions, you know, your vulnerability and your authenticity to ask the questions and to share what's coming up for you as we go through um, these basic basics. Um, you don't know whose life you're gonna touch in sharing, in sharing what's going on for you. And to make it even more of an incentive, if you, if you are not already committed to change, you've taken the first step and the first of our words of knowing your yes and saying yes, even though you might not know the how. Um, I'm going to give away a 60 minute private session with me to use on any area of your life, your body, your business, for your animals, however you want to use it. Um, that is my, my pay it forward to you um, to contribute with your questions and share vulner vulnerably what's going on. So remember to use the hashtag we too uh, when, when you post after these calls within the group. And um, I'm gonna choose one person every day uh, to, have, to have a free session with, with me that many of you who have been my clients know um, are, are priceless and uh, normally come at a price tag of $300. So I do aim to keep these, um, these daily sound bites, these mind body quantum hacks short in, in, within this container. So aim to, to carve out um, no interruptions for at least 15 to 30 minutes each day. Those of you that know me know I do tend to go a little long. And today is definitely going to be one of those days that we go longer um, because I really want to get you um, into 
the space of setting your intentions and just pre-paving what we're going to be covering in the next four days. And of course, as always, this group is a closed group. So what, stay, what goes on here stays here other than inviting other people. Um, to join you in in this community. Um, this is your space. So the replays will stay up uh, within this group so um, Good Christina you Christina says she hears me and if you see me looking away It's just because I've got two monitors going here one with zoom and one with Facebook. So um, So I'm fully present with you and um, I hope that I deliver a lot of heart value for you to really just help you to up your game and really step up because I know that many of you know like like I have been feeling and seeing as sensitives as empaths that you all are um, that there is a lot of overwhelm going on right now and the daily news is is arresting it's disturbing and it's crazy making and it really seems like our human civilization and the Earth's ecological systems are, are coming unraveled really, really fast. Um, they're sort of taking that last gasp on their way to, to hopefully a, a permanent death. And um, I know that, that this paralyzing feeling of helplessness has led, has led to a, a massive increase. I, I was reading some stats that said, uh, suicide is up 30% this year around the world. Um, and people are, 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 are feeling it. They're anxious. Um, you may have felt some depression coming up for yourself. I certainly have. And um, this is happening all over the world. So I really want to explore the questions of, you know, what is power, firstly, personal power, and how can we reclaim our innate ability to be powerful in our lives and contribute back to the world in, in a good way? Because these emergencies and, and dramas, they, they are doing their utmost to suck us in. And sometimes in self-defense, we tune, tune it all out. Um, and, and we need you to stay awake because the results of, of doing that, you know, trying to keep the old systems in, pl in place and, our old ways of doing things in place is just is just moving us further apart, separating us further than ever, and really fragmenting um, everything that that just seems to add to to us spinning up, spinning out of control. So. Um, just let me know in the comments if, if you're, you're, give me a hell yes, if, if this is making um, sense and, and that you're excited to get going, uh, because I really want to jump into it today. And if you do have questions, I will be checking in with you as I go along. Um, but just remember that there, there's always a way through darkness to the hope on the other side. And, and you, and I'm speaking to you, <laughs> you amazing manifester have a very unique role to play in getting getting us all there, which is why I really am putting all my energy and attention behind building this We Too movement in a way that not only moves you to lead a fulfilled, abundant life, but, but in us gathering like this together, that we can push that out into the world in a gentle, loving way that really illuminates the darkness. Um, and also just remember that, you know, from, from the most part, it's not our fault. We, we've all been living in a trance that's dedicated um, to us to not feel like we're ever enough and dictated by old faulty beliefs and lies and lines and manipulations and patterns that were formulated in, in early childhood and in most cases pre-birth and also on our genetic and ancestral and familial lines. So... The, all these beliefs constitute to our identity, which, which continues to reinforce a very debilitating um, way of, of trying to make sense of, of a world that's gone crazy. And it's our, our coming together like this in conversations. Thank you, Sue. I'm so excited that you're joining us um, because it's through these conversations um, and the way that you're being in the world as an example, as a lighthouse for others, to choose something greater than, than they're currently choosing. That's gonna change everything. And I think that the reasons that life seems to jump on us <laughs> um, and, and is really pouncing with a huge amount of intensity right now 
is because reality moves differently to the imagined life that we have or don't have. So let that just sink in for a moment, because does it make sense that the part that you play cannot separate from the old stories that you are the main character in? And it's critical to understand that the struggle, no matter what form it takes, you know, it's, it's getting up to go to work in, a, in the morning or the struggle to control any semblance of right relationship in, in, in your love life or with your children or whatever it is, wherever we are struggling to control, the circumstances go to hide that the image or the story that you have unknowingly created or dreamed yourself into is validated by your pain. And this is where I really felt, feel deeply, and I've been speaking to this for quite some time now, that we have to shift from this Me Too movement that's very stuck in the old ways of story and victimology and, and really tip that M on its, on its upside down to the we and take control of the piece of the thread that we are each holding. So, you know, we don't, there's nothing to prove and nothing to hide. But when we do that, when we go, oh, me too, from a place of meeting somebody in their pain or lowering our energetic vibrational frequency to meet somebody that is negative and cynical and complaining all the time, we're not being very kind to ourselves. And we're certainly continuing to keep that cycle of abuse going. So this does take courage um, to, to really know that, um, that you don't have to prove that you are what you pretended to be. That is, the, for me, the true definition of authenticity or vulnerability. It's saying, this is me, what's and all. This is me standing in my truth for a better world because I matter. And I am a master manifesto. So, you know, it's, it, it's, it's really something that we have to be very mindful of because when we feel that pain coming up and the intensity of it, remember, is very different on your nervous system level. Your kidneys, your adrenals, your nervous system, your kidneys actually don't know. It's the same frequency. Excitement and fear hold the same vibrational frequency. So it really is back to permission to say yes, which is our first basic, basic word today um, of knowing that when we say yes, we need to follow through with the actions and we can't go back to sleep because your work is too important on a singular level. You're being you has to have a voice and you can't keep distracting yourself or getting busy or numbing yourself down with, with eating too much or drinking um, yourself into a stupor because we think, we often think ourselves into trouble, don't we? Rather than looking at what is truly possible when we go to the mind to try and create a, a solution to a problem that actually doesn't exist. So that's really what I want to speak to today, which is why we're going to go a little longer than the 30 minutes. And I'm noticing that we're already at 8.22. So um, just let me know if this is a good um, pace for you. Um, and if you have any questions, just let me know. Um, so, you know, give me your comments. Um, and if you're listening to this on the replay, we're all going to be reading these threads so that we can live to give, to grow, to gain together in the sweet two movement and if you were with me on the last seven day challenges you know that this is this is really building on the foundation of what you already had and i hope hope that you have maintained and out created over over the last couple of months since we last did, did a challenge and um you know to keep you out of suspense as basic as it sounds the, the words that we use we spell we are alchemists we are manifestors from the day we're born and we are manifestors till the day that we die. So it's how we're using our magic, our potency, our power in the words that we are spelling into being that really is what I wanted to bring the lightness of being into um, over the next five days. Because this is, this is serious work, um, but it doesn't have to be heavy. 
Um, so just going forward, the five words that we're going to look at is yes, no, please, thank you, and I'm sorry. Okay, they have a lot of power on them and they also have a lot of charge for many of us because of the bad programming or the insane asylum that we're all committed to and nobody knows it. So just remember that we have to see what the world at large is not wanting to do so that we can have personal fulfillment and global transformation and why you're part of this group because you are committed to doing the work that others are not ready to do. You've already taken a step toward trust and to love that something greater than yourself matters to you and you've already done that by supporting the feral cats in need because you love yourself enough to trust that whatever you give generously is going to come back to you a godzillion times times over and a godzillion is a number so big that only god knows or spirit or divine or whatever you call it so just remember that when we begin to deconstruct these conversations and we we feel the pain that is that is the gift when we can discover that we as the authorities of our own life can rewrite the story of our life up until now and embody a new relationship with ourselves in the world from contribution no validation of 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 a pretend self that's stuck in codependency where we fear something is going to be taken away from me and I cannot change the condition. So we have to change our relationship to the condition by imagining a better outcome. And I talk about this a lot in my work as futuring, right? Where you're imagining that it has already happened because then your brain has to work out new neural pathways and find new solutions to meet you where you already are in the imaginal world. So just type in the comments, because um, I'm really curious to know if you have ever been so desperate to get somebody to see your point of view or, or get your attention or validate you, that, and that if they didn't, you were relentless. In, in speaking and speaking and speaking to them until they gave in to your pain and agreed with you. And I can definitely say hell yes to that. You know, there's no, there's no shame in this. When we acknowledge something, shame can't exist there because underneath shame, you will always find perfectionism hiding and underneath that, you will always find fear hiding. So just remember, manifesting abundance is not about the money or ambition or pushing yourself to do more. This is not what this challenge is about. And what we need to do is start having these kind of experiences, just like this one, in a sustainable, playful, and very low stress way. Because when you start healing those trust wounds and you get back in touch with the magic of your life, that's when everything changes. So type in the comments, if you can remember back to a time where you perhaps used to trust life more than you do now. And you don't need to, to share the details of that, but just type in the comments if you can remember a time when you were, were so in trust and flow that you just were lit up with your life. And this might not necessarily be a comfortable process, but if you think you're ready for it, and if you're still here, you probably are. So, you know, know that, that this is a place where we cry together. We witness each other. We, we are in allowance of what, what, he, what each and every one of us is choosing without any expectation about what we, have, we think we need to do to change that. It's a place where we sit and we witness grief and we also celebrate joy and rebirth and we laugh because laughter is a high vibrational frequency and we'll heal some of these trust wounds together and I think you'll discover that as we go through the next four days life is going to back you up in ways that go way beyond your 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 current expectation remember life appreciates trust in fact I don't believe that you can live in a harmonious way in right relationship with your life, your body, your relationships, your business, your money, your abundance, 
without trust. And I think this is where most people think of power as having control over or believe that power comes from having wealth or assets or resources or guns or strength or status or position. And, and that is not true. This is a very obsolete view that's grounded in those unexamined beliefs of separation and scarcity, which always leads us to dominate and control others and our circumstances. And that's not what the We Too movement stands for. And I'm just so grateful that, that I get to trust that, that I'm not on this journey alone, that I have love warriors that are walking besides me and are going to kick me in the ass fiercely when I need to. This is the fierce wisdom of white wolf and white lion medicine is that you have to honor your yes and you have to honor your no. And we'll get to that uh, probably tomorrow. So just for today, I want to use um, the Oxford Dictionary version or definition of power, which says that it is, it is the capacity or ability to direct or influence the behaviors of others or the course of events. So let's set that intention right now that from a shamanic perspective, we are contributing to, to bringing ourselves back to the heart. Because right now, we've all experienced a global crisis of a, of a collective soul loss. It's a loss of our innate true nature, our essence and our personal power from individual and collective trauma. So these are some of the things we're going to explore of how can we, how can we comprehend the level of insanity in a world that would soil its own nest, rip children from the arms of their mothers, shoot, uh, defensive voters that is happening in the Zimbabwean election right now, um, where people that are standing for clean water, um, like at Standing Rock, were hurt and shot down with, with water hoses, and, and where there are so many of the old patriarchal way that are engaged in activities um, that are promoting ethnic cleansing and genocide all over again. You know, our current language keeps us bound in a mechanistic paradigm of separation and limitation and fear and false objectivity. And we are working together here to move into a quantum field of relativity and connection and communion and possibility interwoven through love because we are standing for that. And that's the place of true power and what, what we're here to do. So buckle up and get excited because this is really where authentic power in being yourself, in, in, in being mindful of how you're showing up is very relational because it's birthed from a very, very deep ancient place of stillness and presence and interconnectedness that the, the sacred chamber of your heart, that om that resides within the heart is always known. Not only, not, not only with other humans, but with all of life in the natural world. And this is a recipro res, res, what am I trying to say? reciprocity. Okay? It's reciprocal and balanced in its relationship of sacredness to, to see and receive each other. Does that make sense? Be the solution. Yes, Christine, exactly. Stunning. Oh, Good. Decades time trying to change others. I know. But you know what? You're awake. And thank you for, for, for being that invitation for others to change. And just now knowing, Sue, that we have a different way of being with, with our personal power that is kind and compassionate and very patient and present. And persistent too, you know, um, those of you, and there's a couple of you here that have done the trust process with me. Um, so you know that, you know, true power moves with life. It's pro-life. It's not against it. And it has an integrity, a wholeness, and it's coherent and, and recognizing in its alignment with larger systems. So from this perspective of the system of that morphic field of collective consciousness where we are changing the way that humanity is, is operating from this new 5D um, that we're not quite in yet, where we're still in this luminal space, 
this perspective is where we embrace the isness of life and and leave the fantasy of the should be or or regret or blame or shame out of it you know it mean it means that we take action from a place of clarity a heart space of heart you know if you're in you're all entrepreneurs here it's it's where heart selling comes from a from a place of generosity and and a clarity and and where you're you're informed by a reality that originates from a still inner presence rather than a past based reaction to current circumstances and conditions of your of your stories remember you are not the story don't be the story or tell the story or buy the story but empower yourself through the power of parables right that that our ancient ancestors passed on through generations of how to be a good human being and as soon as you start to tell yourself in your perception that you can't do something anymore, know that your biological system will always adjust to prove you right. You know, you'll, you'll not do what you think you can't do. Uh, or another way of saying that is that your body will always follow your mind and your body will make you right. So we have to look at our beliefs and how they're shaping our perception and what is our perception of our reality? Um, which for so many of us, I know I certainly was there, where I used to believe that I was inextricably trapped in a body that wasn't working or in a, a, a marriage that, had, that, had, that became where we became enemies or um, in any place where, where, where we're not living into our fullest potential. It's not the truth. You're not trapped. You have and always will be a master manifester. So just know that the way that we see the world, our world's view impacts our power and freedom to make aligned choices, right? Aligning your soul with your goal. You all know that, that way of um, speaking um, to ourselves. And this is where in the we too, to change our own personal worldview, we have to first explore and question our most fundamental beliefs, which is like, you know, like trying to see our own face, which is why we need eyes on us in, in uh, communities and movements like this, where we can reflect back to each other the beauty and the love and the potential and the gifts and the capacities and that we see in others reflected back to us. Because we can't only, you know, we can only ever see a reflection of our, of our own face. And what we see is what we believe, which is why we need the community. We need the tribe. Uh, we're mammals. We're soft-bodied animals, actually. And we need to be able to trust in, in our life, meaning something that is contributing to the meaning of the greater of the group, if that makes sense. So uh, let me just check here. So let me know how you're doing, if you're still with me. Um, so afraid of delusions with your curtain and narcissistic relationships. Yeah, I hear you, Christine. And this is, you know, this is where we literally do scare ourselves sick if we don't get to the root cause of what created that in the first place. And most of the time, as you know, you've worked with me privately for, for some time, that, that oftentimes our fears are very ungrounded because we take on the fears of those that are actually hurting and harming us most. And, and just remember, you know, our past is, is based prim, primarily in our reptilian brain that processes over, mil, you know, over a million times more nerve impulses per second than, than the conscious mind's neocortex. So this means that if we're not vigilant in, in how we're showing up in each present moment, our actions will always be dictated by our past. So our identity or who we considered ourselves to be and our corresponding actions are always going to be based in the remembered past of that um, narcissistic relationship so we need to actually look at it from a different place and I'm going to speak to that um, more during today so if you still feel like you're stuck on that Christina let me know um, 
but a great question that, that, that I want to put out to you and one that you can either um, openly comment to in the post or just keep all for you in your journaling, in your journey work is, is to ask, how can, how can we together create an evolutionary upgrade to our own belief systems? And I know that one of the greatest assets for transforming and upgrading my own personal narrative was to really get clear and define the story that was defining my me and knowing that it was fear. You know, what's that thing Joseph Campbell says that the cave you fear to enter holds the treasure you seek. So just remember fear, anxiety, it, even depression, it's frozen power, right? where you give a negative de definition to something, it's always going to rob you of the opportunity to grow and evolve. It's a warning of danger, either real or perceived or imagined. And that warning is going to show you what wants to be healed or attended to in your life. You know, the feeling of danger, those spidey senses, you know, trust in your gut and a, a lot of many, 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 I would say the majority of our fears are often related to the death. Of, of our identity, of our I-hood in the old stories. So when we fail to realize is that our fears hold the key to our evolutionary growth and transformation. It's a precious roadmap to our awakening. And the source of our fears is also often, as I said, it's our past-based identity. It's where we're not allowing the death of the story because we think that the death of the old story is going to be mean a physical death to our, our body, at least on the nervous system level. That's what happens. So in order to address the pain of threatening situations and ret retrieve our true nature, our essential being, our unique talents, our capacities, our genius, right? Our diamond blueprint. We came in and coded as manifestors. And it's this illusion of fear. It's this illusion of abandonment and separation with our fears where we're not you know we're not not letting them shut down our ability to create and fully enjoy life anymore that's where the upgrade and and the, the quantum leaping happens is when we must go to the body the physical body to learn how to ground our energy and presence because that's where the that's where the magic happens and we have to be willing to go at our body's own pace especially when we're practicing staying present in the face of fear to track it to the frozen energy in our physical bodies and the time that we created that fear you know what age were you at the time that you decided that that was true then we can start to dissipate the energy of the trauma and open up new portals of power so it doesn't make sense that if we can be with fear and locate it in our bodies we'll relax the intensity and then we can actually enjoy the sensation of um, excitement, right? The intensity as multi-sensory beings. It's our duty, you know, it's our job to feel everything with an intensity. Who doesn't want to have an intense life? But we see intensity and misidentify it as pain or something to be afraid of or to avoid at all costs based on the faulty programming and, and lies and manipulations that we have been entrained and implanted with ever since we kind of took our first breath so the body can always ground the fear just by consciously breathing into it and awareness can always unwire our stories from the past and and leave us with the choice the power of choice to go beyond the limits of our own perceptions and closely guarded narratives so that's really, really what I want to speak to today. And we're almost at quarter to eight. So I'm going to aim to finish this for nine o'clock. Um, so we're going to go another 15 minutes. I, I understand if you have to hop off, um, just know that the replay will be up. But I really want to speak to um, this healing, the virus of the mind, because that's going to be your first step today in saying yes, to redefine the old stories and, and show up in a way that's really going to give you the medicine. And it, I think the medicine, your medicine right now is reminding you of this, this great chaos, right? That you are not your mind <laughs> and use it as a tool, right? Employ your mind 
to work for you in cultivating mindfulness and really moving through, um, you know, like the medicine wheel or the compass directions is all telling you, employ your mind to work for you, right? It is just a tool. And again, your ego is going to come into this as this protective defensive mechanism, but it is up to us to use that in a discerning way. Because when you live in a culture that has not initiated you into adulthood, right, which is the primary function of that initiation, yes, I get it. It's hard to do this sometimes. And it is still your responsibility. So this matters to all of us because it is critically important. It's, it's so important that you take responsibility for your choices and also the power of your choices to manifest a new world, which is why it's important to remember you are not your mind so that we humans can take that full responsibility as long as we are under this illusion that we are our mind. I mean, as I said earlier, you just have to look at the political players on the stage um, in America, in Zimbabwe, in South Africa, and you can see precisely why, you know, thinking you are your mind and having no relationship with the deeper self that is present here embodied in you is a problem. <laughs> and, you know, the same could be saying, said for every continent on the planet right now. Um, when we look, look at the African saga of post-colonialism, where communism, um, where Chinese own Africa is, is coming more and more into play, which in its essence is all about control and domination where you are told you have no choice, you know, one party state rules my way or the highway. And it's a very strange evil that is being perpetrated upon Africa um, between, you know, mindless, um, very greedy politicians. And that can again, goes to every country in the world. Um, and, and where it's very kilted in their relationship with, um, with China, actually. So, so my question today is how do we create change? And it's this, instead of being used by your mind, use your mind, because when you do two critical things emerge and they become very dynamic in, in looking at where you need to take responsibility to begin to see well and to see more accurately. But until you realize you're not your mind, you can't see these things anyway. <laughs> um, and um, I talk a lot about that in, in, in other programs. But for now, just know that your mind, at least to understand what's going on, your mind needs to know. So now that we know that we're not our mind and that your mind is a tool, one of the things that that tool needs to do is, is to really understand what is actually going on, particularly underneath the surface reality of all this overwhelm and disruption of the media and the reactions that are happening because of the media spin, you know, the truth, the fake news, and people that are extremely caught up in that, you know, uh, most of us are caught up in social media. So your mind needs to be able to use critical thinking to see below all of that. And the second thing is that you need to commit to whether or not you are going to choose to carry, carry this virus of the mind um, and be seduced by the surface world and play into this trauma, drama, and emergency, or if you're going to be unseducible and commit to empower and operate yourself with the real energies below and make a choice about what it is that you want your life to manifest as. You know, this, is, this requires enormous, enormous, enormous mental discipline. And I think it's one of um, the main reasons a lot of people leave because they don't want to take responsibility for mental discipline. You know, they like listening to these challenges. They love journeying. Um, they're happy to bring some of these ideas into the everyday life. But the idea that they need to disconnect from being their mind and showing extre the extreme mental discipline necessary to be very clear about what they're manifesting in the world. Oh, it's way too real for a lot of people, but not you, we too people, because I know you're committed because you said yes to this. So I want you to just, if you do have some of that running, stop that powerful train of thought that is so already ingrained in the way that it thinks. And the way to stop it is exactly what we're talking about. 
is once you realize that you're not your mind, then the next step is that you need to be very conscious about what you're choosing to bring into the world. Um, you know, and I think these are all very old answers, just like these are very old basics, you know, but they're ideas and questions that every one of us needs to answer in life. They don't go away just because they're old. So let's break this down. Um, and, and we're going to break this down over the next five days. But, you know, if we look at what's below the surface and below your reactions and everybody else's reactions, and we look at what's really real here, um, in other words, when you can understand deeply what is driving things like racism and destruction of the planet or um, the way that we're treating animals, we have to look underneath that. Racism is another one. We need to look underneath the systems of, of it all and dive down deeper to the roots and the energies that really supporting that system of racism or genocide or whatever it is and start in the direction of north, right? This is in the compass direction. That is the direction of the mind. So I want you to take time today to notice what's really going on out there in this wild waste circus um, of, of human beingness that's going on and then go into choice of how you want to respond to that. Is it true? Is it true? Is a good question. And then look at the ecosystem of right relationship. Because when we do that, and we're looking at what we are reacting to, what fears come up, what triggers push you, um, you know, and I'm not, we're not saying this is right or wrong here, but we're just looking at what is here and what is going on in your life, your communities, your relationships, the global scale, and ask, what is it that I need to see and what is distracting you from not seeing in this very busy world that is, that is filled with ways to shut you down and turn you off to the truth of what that is. So instead of getting depressed, instead of just grieving um, or venting, use your mind and ask, how am I going to address this thing? Because we are living in the death of the old story. Um, you know, it's like crabs in a pot. They're, they're grasping at the last, last bits of, of it to keep themselves alive. It's already dead. But we need to give ourselves a space in this luminal time, right, where we're between what was and the old patriarchy of the 3D. And we're not quite in what's coming through yet, right? So we're in the waiting room right now with one foot here and one foot not quite planted in the in there and we know our mind and we know our mind is trapped in the old story so we need to actively again engage in that critical thinking to draw our minds out of that old story and engage in the present time that we're in and the words to use for that is to use that we are in the time between stories so does it make sense that if we are always um, journeying or we're always futuring around the things that we don't like that are going on in our lives in the world um, in our businesses and our relationships and we are reacting to that that we're never going to get to the root of what created that in the first place um, So we need to pull our mind out of the old story and ask how can we engage with the skills here in the time between stories in the waiting room? Ask yourself what actions do you need to do to begin to shape your new story as the author of your life? And also, what actions do you need to stop doing so that you do not pollute your new story before it even has time to be born or take shape in your world? You know, these are all very good shamanic um, inquiries to really understand what's going on here between stories. And also within that, we need to be very aware of not eddying out of this transitional place because it's uncomfortable. And we need to do that as much as we can by not grasping for the past to solve our discomfort to the future and our uncertainty of, between, of being between worlds right now or between dimensions. And trust that when we're able to drop out of the mind, come back into the body, body then we can start to recognize all the crazy stuff we've been doing in our mind to exacerbate what we don't want. And then employ your mind to get you what you do want in between stories. And also, um, you know, to just be present with what is yours to change, you know, 
um, not grasp for the past all the time um, and and know that the things that worked in the past are not going to work to get you forward. We have to create in this We Too movement a different way of being that is not of the mind and practice the fact that we're not our minds so that we can start to realize that um, our mind's been running the show and literally scaring you sick because you didn't realize that you had a choice and that you're trading stories as if they are real instead of being able to see underneath the stories to something much, much deeper and eternal that is going on here because of you being here. And, you know, this, this psychic virus is, is really um, what I want to speak to here or what the indigenous uh, Cree people call Watiko, okay, um, which, which literally translates to this virus of the mind. It's a cancer of the mind that's actually spreading all the crap around the planet. And they use this to understand the role of the mind and particularly the weakness of the mind to be vulnerable to this virus and what we go into in depth in the direction of north. That it doesn't ride in the body, it doesn't ride in the spirit, it rides and inhabits the mind as an entity. Wahiko is an entity. So evict it. You know, will you be responsible to be the one that carries this virus into the new story? Or are you going to use this time now between stories to become immune to Watika? So that is what I want to invite you into as we go forward, is to really look at what is really going on here and, you, and look at, is your mind feeding the virus of uncertainty, of chaos, of lack, of scarcity, of fear, of hatred, of greed? Or is it going to aid you in transmuting this? this terrible virus that is creating this great separation sickness that is a cancer that's spreading across the planet. And that is why we need you, right? Just like the indigenous people talk about the movement of one world ending and another world beginning. If you look at some of the stories that our ancients taught us, um, they were always warning signs to look at what is the arrogance that in, in my false sense of illusion or identity, I got carried into a new world. And I think that's the greatest gift that we can give to the new world and to our ancestors is to sacrifice all false, act, false identities of yourself that are addicted to Watika, that are addicted to feeding the mind with this impurity, this virus, and to be present as a light worker right now. That's the greatest gift that you can give to the future is to sacrifice all those old aspects of yourself right here, right now, in this time, in the waiting room between stories so that we do not carry this virus across this gap of unknown possibility. <sighs> so there you go. So remember, as you go about your life, creating a better world that you are only responsible for the peace. I still have my red thread my, on my arm. You know, this virus of the mind, Watiko, can only survive in a host. So the next time someone pulls on your thread and crosses a boundary or you get sucked into somebody else's trauma, trauma or drama or emergency, look at what is emerging around you in your own life and in your own community by trusting that you are the one that holds the power of choice through strong boundaries that you have the integrity and the know-how and the awareness to hold the truth of what your heart is calling into you to become. As this bridge between the old 3D templates, the old stories, the fall of the patriarchal systems, and you are being this bridge as you sit in the waiting room until you're ready to speak to the new world that you are creating, you are weaving it into being in the 5D reality and within this We Too movement. And I hope that you're excited about that, you know, that you get to hold your peace, you get to tug on, on the string to get eyes on you within this community. And you also get to, to rest because you have the power of your tribe and your community that is gonna do what needs to be done while you rest in the waiting room. 
So I, I think that feels complete for today. Um, if you have any questions, uh, comments, um, post them in the link below. And just remember, you know, that, that the difference between the heart, the heart brain and the head brain and the gut brain is distance. That's it. But it's all connected. It's all part of you. This is your housing and you get to be the one that creates the commands and the commitments and the asks that your body follows, not your mindlessness, but your mindfulness. And, and we can then start to create this coherence between the, the heart, brain, the brain in your head and the brain in your gut. So um, that's it for today. So I, I encourage you to do some journey work on that. Um, and just notice the next time that you um, start entering into a conversation with Watiko, with this virus of the mind, course correct. Increase the connection between your heart fields. And when those emotions come up, when your mind's telling you, who are you to think you can change anything? Who are you to do anything? You know, it's kind of like the, the meme that's going around at the moment that, that says, um, you know, what's, what's, what's me using one plastic straw going to do anything to polluting the universe? Well, if 8 billion people are all saying that, we have a problem. And you're, you're part of this because you are committed to changing that. So just be aware of what you're feeling. Um, don't label it, just be aware and then choose to feel it. You know, feeling, it doesn't mean you want more of it. Remember that it just means you are in allowance that that's how you're feeling now and that this too shall pass. This is temporary, but it's our body's best way to give us feedback of where we're out of congruence, where we're creating a disconnect or incoherence between what our heart knows and what our gut knows, and this wahiko in our minds is trying to corrupt on that uh, programming. So, you know, just be there, feel it. And then, of course, the third step is to just let go and choose another perspective. Ask in a different way and see how it starts to lighten up and open up for you. And say yes, right? That's your first lesson for today. Um, you know, if you're feeling anxiety, um, just observe the thoughts that are making you anxious. And remember, you are the one that thinks the thoughts, but you are the authority of your own mind. Get your mind back into working for you, not against you. And then redefine this in, in a, a lighter way as excitement or um, rather than fear. Our emotions are always telling us where we are in right relationship or, or out of alignment to what we're thinking or focusing on. So become aware, allow it, and then let it go. And um, I think I'll leave it at that. So thank you for being here. I'm so excited to being on this journey with you. And remember, um, insights, comments, uh, get to know the community that you're in because we, can't, we can go so much further together than alone. Um, and I will be popping in, answering any questions in between our calls over the next five days. And um, they'll probably only be about 15, 20 minutes going forward. But because I wanted to spend more time in really getting this mind virus um, in your awareness so that you can flush it or hit control, alt, delete. Um, just remember, as Maya Angelou says, that love arrives and it's, in, in its train comes ecstasies old memories of pleasure, ancient histories of pain. Yet if we are bold and courageous, we are love warriors here. And when love strikes away the chains of fear from our souls, when we actually stand in our truth, not hide in our timidity, um, that's where we are love's light. When we dare to be brave, when we use our voices and we stand for what truly matters to us, um, suddenly you get to see that love costs all we are and will ever be. As she says, yet it is only love which sets us free. So know that you're loved and I will see you on the other side tomorrow. All right. Thank you.
Bye.